today. I'm excited. It's no last night. I know, which is a beautiful thing, because we can see that beautiful blue tongue. So blue tongue skinks are native to Australasia. Um, this particular species is native to Australia and New Guinea and Tasmania, those islands in that area. Um, they're very common. They're going to eat that too if they like it. And even sometimes carrion, so dead stuff. If they, if they find something that they do like and enjoy, then they're going to eat that as well. So they're, they're not terribly choosy, which does make them more adaptable in that environment. You want to talk about the blue tongue? Let's talk about this. When he's got this, this tongue really stretched out, really spread out, and really looking uh, to startle a predator. And that's what he's trying to do. He's either trying to go make it go, oh, man, what? So he can scurry away. You can tell that he's probably not very fast just because he's got these little short, stumpy legs. And Maybe he just is sick. There's something wrong with this thing. And if the predator eats it, he's going to get sick too. Well, in fact, none of those things are true. And so what he's doing, his defense is actually mimicry. But he's mimicking through a warning color. So he's got kind of two didn't have a name for this skink yet. We didn't know male or female, so trying to be non-gender specific. And um, I happened to meet an Australian woman uh, and a gentleman, and it was wonderful to talk to them about blue tongue skinks and their native environment. I'd never done that before. I hadn't had the privilege. And um, I was thinking, wow, Waltzing Matilda, which someone more famously put into a folk song format. And that's Kind of the, the theme of Australia. We hear that that song a lot if we if you look into the, the culture of Australia. So Waltzy Matilda is what he wrote, along with many, many other po poems. Um, so he would be kind of equal to our Edgar Allan Poe. If you think about it, if I would name my dog Edgar Allan and then go to another country and they'd say, what's his name? Edgar Allan. Oh. <laughs> kind of that reaction. Um, so that's why his name is Banjo. It's a pretty unique name, but it's something that uh, it's that that's a person that the uh, the Australians really do honor and respect, and um, we, we thought it would be a great name for him too. We then um, and and Banjo here is six years old. He just turned six, actually, just about a month ago. And uh, we do have another blue tongue skink named Dusty. We decided to stay with the theme of artists of Australia, and there is a, a singer, a country singer. His name was. Um, Slim Dusty, and we decided Dusty would be a fun name for a skink as well. So we have Banjo and Dusty. Sorry, uh, the feed isn't really good, so I'm trying to fix that. Let me, okay. we're trying to get the Wi-Fi to connect, but it's not working real well. Um, let's, I know how I can play with it. Well, I'm trying to. Sorry, I'm trying to get it to. I'm in the spotlight. Yeah, it's not your fault. It's <laughs> it's all me. Um, anyhow, we'll just keep pressing on, unfortunately, and uh, try to do better next time. Um, Stacy actually has a question. She asked, "Where do where all do skinks live?" So there's lots of different types of skinks. Where do they live throughout the world? Oh my goodness, pretty much everywhere. They're very common, um, but not uh, Antarctica. They don't enjoy the the very cool climates. They're they're uh, they can do um, temperate climates where you have seasons, but not so much just the constant cold. So you're not going to have them way to the north, way to the south, but anywhere in between, you really will have skinks. There are many types. There are actually four types of blue tongue skinks. Um, we have three types here in Illinois. We have the very common five line skinks. They're the ones with the blue tail, and we see those very commonly um, in forested areas, often to the south of us here in, in Bloomington. Um, we also have broad headed skinks, which are pretty common all throughout the eastern United States. And we also have um, brown skinks, which are very small little brown guys. But the skink family of lizards, I just, I just think they're pretty neat looking. Um, they're very unique because you can tell, when you look at a lizard, you can often tell it's a skink just because of this head shape. It's kind of a triangle. And it almost just goes straight into the shoulders. It does, they don't have much of a neck. And to me, that's a little, it's pretty indicative of a skink that um, they have more of a, a stout body. And the tail will differ. Skinks can be different. They are 
Um, some are stumpy tailed, some have longer tails, some have longer legs, some have shorter legs. So you can't really tell from that. But we do have some here in Illinois. So if you pick up a log, uh, pick up a you know fallen log. Um, my sister over in Indiana has a wood pile, you know, for for feeding the wood stove. And um, my nephew Spencer, who's probably watching, hey Spencer, um, we we would move the move the wood, and there would be. These lizards, these skinks that would be coming out of the woods that we could, we could go, you know, look for it, and um, didn't always want to try to catch them. They're not always happy about that, but uh, we did like to find them. It's always fun to find. Um, Eli wants to know what they eat. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, here at the zoo, they get a mixed diet. Eric, why don't you fill him in on what the diet is? He is their keeper. So yeah. I'll tell you that. Uh, here at the the zoo, we give the the skinks a little bit of cat food that we soften with water because they don't have good teeth for crunching stuff. Um, they like they eat a lot of softer stuff. So a little bit of soft cat food. They eat some fruits and vegetables, mostly vegetables, and some lettuce. And then we'll give them a little bit of meat, um, just the same meat we give the tiger, but just a little tiny bit. And then every once in a while they get some insects. They Insects are a really good treat for them because that's one of the things they would eat in the wild. So mealworms or sometimes crickets is a really good treat for them. All right, Grace's mom has two questions. Uh, number one is how big do they get? We'll do that one first. Okay, well he is full grown, and he's, he, it's, he's a male, which makes him a little bit larger than the females. Females tend to be a little bit smaller, not a ton, but a little bit, less broad here in the body, and then just shorter in general, smaller head, more feminine shaped head. Um, but. This is, this is an average size for this type of blue tongue skink. Um, with the skinks we have in Illinois, they're much smaller. So if you're gonna find a, a lizard a skink here, you're gonna be looking for something more in to eight to 10 inch range. Okay. Um, Grace's mom's other question is, how often do they shed? Oh my goodness, well, these guys, they shed every couple of months. They're gonna kind of replenish those scales. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that because we're kind of having a party going on right here. Um, <laughs> they don't some? shed. Yeah. yeah, we got some scales Good, right let here. Let me zoom in on those. Uh huh. They're fabulous. You might. They might look green because they are almost clear. They have a translucent quality, so there's there's color to them, but there you can also see through them. So you might understand that a lot of reptiles do shed scales, snakes and lizards particularly. And uh, with snakes, they shed all in one piece. With a lot of lizards, they shed in big chunks. Big chunks of their scales come off at once. With the blue tongue skinks, each of their scales will shed individually. So each one of these is a scale. Um, I tell people when, when they aren't sure what they want to touch this skink, I tell them that he feels like corn on the cob. <laughs> and he really does. You can tell that he's got these just smooth, shiny scales, but they're in rows going this way. They're just all in these rows and it feels just like an ear of corn on the cob. Well, each of those rows is a is layers of scales um, throughout his whole body. So they're not connected to one another. They don't grow with him, but he's gonna, so he's gonna shed these off just like we would shed skin cells. Um, and he doesn't shed continually. Um, it's just that these were left over from his last shed. They didn't get shed. Oftentimes that will happen with these guys because they don't have that well, there's so many of them, <laughs> but when they are starting to shed, it's kind of like a party. It's confetti. It's everywhere, and, and that's a lot of fun. Kind of cool. Very different for, for most other lizards. Uh, so Madeline, who's 11, and also Stacy, they both want to know how old do blue tongue skinks get? Good question. Well, they can live, when they get to 15, they're considered geriatric, but they could live up to 30 years. So they're a, a pretty long-lived animal. Okay. Uh, Ashley um, has kind of an interesting question. They have a big body and little tiny limbs, so do they ever scoot around? Oh, completely, yes. They, he really cannot lift his body off the ground. It's just not possible. So when he moves, I'm going to kind of put him over here and start, and maybe he'll, he likes to go to the edge. So you can see how he's really not lifting his torso off the ground. He's just scooting it. And because of that, and his tail as well, it just does not lift off the ground. He lifts his head up. Um, it's it, it, because of that, he really has a very thick layer, thick, 
well, thick layers of scales on his body. They're really thick. Um, sometimes with reptiles, you can feel them and it just, you can, you can kind of tell there's a thin layer and you're really feeling uh, the skin move and that kind of thing under the scales. With him, you can't, it's almost like armor. Um, it's not gonna protect him from predators that way, but it is gonna protect him from sand, from rocks, dirt, sticks that he might be like, you know, rubbing over as he moves. So yeah. cool. Also from drying out real easy when he's in the hot summer sun. Absolutely. We want to show his belly real quick. Oh, sure. He's a, his belly's really cool looking. So there's his underside. And that can vary in color just a little bit, but nobody really sees it. No. <laughs> it's very cool, though. It's got that little pink to it. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's about time to put Banjo away. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining on this beautiful spring, winter day, whatever it is today. Uh, we appreciate you, you stopping in. If you feel like you want to help us out and hit that donate button, we really appreciate it. Feel free to keep sending questions. We'd love to answer those as well. Thanks for stopping by.